Hello, welcome back to Supersymmetry. Today we are beginning with, uh, we're making, we're replacing the stupid router we made. We made a router, and that was not a good idea, because the router is probably not what we need. With this, you can connect multiple channels, controllers. We need to make the controller, basically, is what it's saying. Uh, uh, the router will come in handy eventually, I'm sure. Thank goodness I had more of this left over in the ingot chest. I didn't even know I had that there. I think this should be good. Yep, got a controller now. Nice. I'm not very familiar with the workings of this device, so we're going to have to figure that out. I'm sure it works pretty good. According to the book, the controller is the main driver of the network, and every network needs one of these guys. It also needs power in the GUI GUI. The controller you can create up to eight different channels with a given type. Each connected, and then for each connected block on that channel, you can create a connection. Depending on the type of channel, there are various parameters you can set for a connection. Okay. And we're going to test that out on this uh, this guy. He's empty, so pretty easy to switch a room. Oh, crap. I got to go behind there. Holy crap. This place is a real mess right now. Uh, the reason I'm opting to do it uh, this direction instead of having it the way it was before is because I don't want to have to pipe like a bunch of cables out, so... Oh, so we just place the connector right on this guy. Can we place the connector on this guy? Do we mine this? What do we mine this with? Because it just, yeah, it just mines like that. And then we just need a connector there. Oh, whoa. What? Oh. This is cool. I don't understand how this works. At all. <laughs> uh, so we have a machine connected. That's, that's obvious. That's a given. Oh, I need my wire cutters. We, we need to extend this this guy down over here. We need to extend them uh, this direction. There we go. Boom. Alright. So all we gotta do is... I think this connector goes in. He's getting charged now, which means he can probably do stuff. Now, can you tell me more about this machine, please? Controllers, it is often handy... Okay, but what, what the heck? So what does this do? Xnet Energy. What... Okay, so that's channel one, right? And clearly, this guy's on... I don't even know. Okay, we're gonna set this guy to Xnet item, I think. And then we need to make this mess with stuff. Okay, so we can just go ahead and use Magnetite. We want to set this guy to transport uh, Xnet energy. Xnet item. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's what we want. Great. Okay, so on channel one, we can set, uh, what are we, what are we doing? Uh, priority? Item distribution mode? Round robin priority. Priority! Wh whatever that means. I don't even know. I think round robin goes in circles, but, uh, we just hit create, I guess. Oh, nice. Okay. So this looks pretty easy and simple to understand. Uh, NBT and stuff. This is like any other item for filter, except it's just uh, fancier. Uh, slightly fancier. Okay, so Magnetite goes in uh, just there. And I guess on uh, channel 2 we can have another item that's going to be transported around. What is this? Network 2, Consumer 3. Network 2. Network 2, Consumer 1. Consumer 3. What? What the heck? Why is there consumers? Uh -huh. Okay, so we need anthracite and magnetite to go that way. Right, so they're gonna go into this guy and do their thing. And then we're gonna have... Okay, that's the insert. Then on the west side, we could also create a... Uh... What was this? Connector PBF. Oh! Okay, so that's... So um, this guy says east is actually the connection to the primitive blast furnace, so... If we create the connection here, we should be able to have it set to extract mode. Now, I have had a significant realization that we are going to need more than just uh, this number of pipes. <laughs> yeah. Or, well, connectors. We need a lot of connectors. And I think we could just actually get around using extra connectors for this <laughs> by doing some magic. Remember, there is no magic in supersymmetry, only suffering, but what we're about to do is basically magic. 
So this can act as like an extraction device, like this this crater. Uh, so basically, we could have use regular filters and conveyors on the sides of this, which saves us expenses making the actual other things, which is good. Um, I'm not sure why it is up and down as options. Oh wait, because it can extract down and then like, yeah, okay. Uh, so we'll make that now. So we're basically killing two birds with one stone. I don't know what insert or extract mode means. We'll figure that out <laughs> because there's uh, probably some issues here. But basically all we need to do is have it set to extract and for sight and magnetite. And then if we, I guess if we put these in here, it should just be extracted. No. Oh. oh, what that? What the heck? So how does that work? How does that work at all? Insert? Nothing. Oh. How does this work? Or right, maybe I'm going about this wrong. Because maybe we don't run it through the router. Does the router even have an inventory? I think it just... This just tells it what to do. Okay, seems like I know what we need to do. <laughs> we need to create a channel here. Say, insert. And I think we need to remove these channels. Which I think that should have... Yep. Holy crap, I know what I'm doing now. I actually know how to do this. So, put one in. <laughs> it does that. Nice. Which now means that what I need to do for the other thing is create a new channel for insert from there and extract from here. This is so simple. <laughs> I just went to like some guy's tutorial and it took like I skipped to the part about extracting things because that's where I was confused and then I saw what he was doing and connected all of the dots. So now this should technically, if everything is done correctly, allow us to input anthracite, which I, I needed to go faster. Uh, this is this is not good. This is not sufficient. It needs to be much faster. <laughs> I mean, uh, can we make it faster? Can, can we please make it faster? Uh, number of ticks, go down. Oh, uh, we can't go down. Uh, yeah, just go stack. Full stacks is good. Yeah, and it doesn't take too much energy, does it? We'll see how much energy this thing just used, because it just, uh, I did nothing. Okay, so our energy is pretty good. Well, now I know how to do our XNet stuff, and uh, that's good. Which the next stage is actually setting up a system that deals with ash. A horrible item. It's a blight. It. Why does it exist? Honestly, I don't know. <laughs> uh. Oh yeah, we can we can use this forge hammer. Okay, that was the original plan was to move the forge hammer over so we could actually use it for what it, I intended it to be used for, which is uh, processing this. However, uh, I don't see a way we can move it. I think we're going to have to leave it there. We could run a brass pipe through the top. Okay, so the plan is we're going to have a brass pipe here, which takes care of this pig iron. And the ash itself, I'm not too sure how to dispose of that, really. My plan for that is to literally just throw it into the void, maybe, or like... You know what? We're gonna put it inside of crates, and then we're gonna throw those into the void. That's that's a good idea. Okay, so I from a while ago I made this stupid looking box. Uh, where is it at? I believe I got several different types of boxes, so we can choose from those. Uh, actually, maybe I don't. I, I thought I had a box that looked pretty dumb. Seems I uh, have misplaced that. I had one that looked like this on the other side, but uh, seems it does not exist. I think I might have repurposed that one. Yeah, we'll just use this one. This one looks kind of dumb, so, uh... <laughs> he's gonna go there. We don't need him to look anything. Yeah, we just kind of need him. So, we have a lot of latex produced right now. <laughs> look at how much rubber we have. <laughs> so much. Okay, it's time for us to automate this. And do we have any filters available? I don't think so. Alright, I think we're gonna have to make some. Yeah, probably. I'm a little bit disappointed we race, wasted a uh, connector on this guy. I mean, at least we got the connectors, because uh, that, that was the main thing that did. So I actually made the um, this controller and some of these networking pipes, and I just didn't know how to use them last time. But now that we know how to use them, I don't have to... I can literally just set up automation for ore processing. 
<laughs> which is how how far we've gotten. Ooh, I just had a brainwave. It's a pretty good idea. I think we can actually route items through this pipe, right? We could use a filter on the side of this guy. Instead of actually just using the filter the way on the conveyor belt itself, we can use the filter there, and then we can use it so it, uh, insert, yeah. Uh, so we can use it so it's like this, and set it to only insert that, which is what's only going to be allowed in there. <laughs> so basically, that's all that can be sent from here to there. However, this guy could also send out to another box. Let's go ahead and say this box, for example. We can just connect them in there. Uh, that's not connected. That is that is annoying. <laughs> this, but this is something I never thought that we would actually be able to do. Is have basically auto fully automated. I still have to go mine stuff, of course. Yes, uh, but whenever I bring stuff back, all I have to do is shove it in the machine, and it does all the rest for me. I don't gotta do nothing, which is incredible. This is the future, man. Anyway, that's set to automatically outputting into this box here. Which now, all we have to do is connect this. Wait a second. Uh, like that. And we should see that items are... Yes, well, they're being pig irons going into there. And here is our ashes. Nice. Which from here, we could actually use a uh, another output, a, um, a conveyor belt to extract and then pipe over to another blast furnace if we wanted to set up steel automation. Uh, wrought iron is good enough for me. I don't need to do steel yet. Now let, let's focus on getting the actual anthracite automated. So with anthracite, it's actually more productive to send it to the ore processing thing. The centrifuge, which I guess we're going to use the centrifuge today. I'm betting we could just, uh, well, actually, there, there is a side product to this, and it's like um, the tiny ones. Well, we'll have to... Why don't we just do the wash for... Uh, <laughs> packager, yeah, no. <laughs> That's not happening. Not at all. <laughs> We're just gonna have to do that by hand. We'll have to have a um, thing that does that for uh, a shelf of some kind. Not a shelf. Drawer. And uh, we'll just have to deal with the actual anthracite itself being, like, the tiny piles of it just piling up here, but... That should be good. A magnetite is going to need its own line. I don't think we're going to be able to run it through the the um, setup there. We'd have to reconfigure every single thing we've already done. Uh, so, for now, we're just going to go ahead and get some magnetite and just do it ourselves by hand. Uh, but later on, we'll actually automate it. Now, this is the anthracite in question. Quite a large quantity of it we have piled up. And we're going to simulate it coming from the hopper, <laughs> like this. It should go through perfectly to the centrifuge. The centrifuge, all byproducts except for that, will be sent into there. Then this guy needs magnetite, which we can do by hand. So, uh, magnetite should just be here, literally. And we're going to use uh, the hand basin. <laughs> oh my gosh. We're not going to do any anthracite by hand, because that's just inefficient now that we have this actual setup going. This is incredible. Fully automated. Well, se semi-automated. Yeah, passive ore processing. How is that? That's that's good. And then, we just gotta put these in here. And you can just see this and go. Stuff gets sent over to here. Stuff gets moved over there. Stuff is being processed in a furnace. Which is all, this is all good. Uh, so we have 64 ash, 96 wrought iron, which is incredible. And it's still going. This is, uh, this is an incredible setup we got. We got automatic iron. Last episode we finished, like, automating the other thing. I have become a master at automating every single thing I do now. <laughs> which is nice. I don't have to, I'll just go mining. And then come back. And... I don't have to do anything. My machines do it all for me. This is brilliant. The next thing we should automate is uh, some way of getting anthracite. <laughs> or actually doing the mining for us. Yeah, but those those drills are like really ridiculously hard to do. 
Like, I'm not saying they're expensive to do. The thing is, is that you have to hunt for a very specific deposit, as you can see. Let me type it in here. It's called a deposit. And there are quite a few of these. Each of them will give you a different thing. You place the mining drill on top of it, which is, if you're new to Greg Deck, a quite big machine. It's not... This is not very expensive, okay? It looks expensive to uh, people who are first starting out. I used to think it was expensive, but honestly... I could probably build this in like a day, so it's pretty good. But you'd have to get six of them, or multiple of them, because you got quite a few deposits. I believe uh, these these ones aren't actually deposits. Wait, alluvial is a deposit, I think. Yeah, you have to run that through the ore sorter. Different alluvial ones are platinum depo placer deposit. I don't remember this one. Uh, but that's basically it for today. We've done quite a large amount of stuff, especially in the mean of automation.